So let's keep going a little bit more. And here it is in the list, ProQuest One Academic. Um, so why should we choose ProQuest One Academic and what is it? Well, ProQuest One Academic is actually a database that has several different resources in it. So for instance, if you used to use ProQuest Central, it is actually now in ProQuest One Academic, Academic Complete, ProQuest Dissertations and Theses, and also Academic academic video online are all included in this one um, kind of discovery tool or one layer of ProQuest One Academic. There are um, a lot of reasons you might want to start with this kind of resource whenever you're doing research, for instance. Um, because this is just such a great place to find peer reviewed journal articles. Um, if you're kind of have a broad topic and you want more of a general database, this is a good place to go when you have your topic idea. And also this is just an interdisciplinary. So it's not subject specific as some of our other databases are. For instance, Psych Articles and Psych Extra. And if you scroll down through here, you'll see some other ones that are more psychology specific or other ones that are more um, medical and health, but ProQuest One Academic is a lot broader than that. So it's just a good general database to start with. I don't recommend you starting with this particular database when you, um, if you're just beginning to look for sources on your topic until you get a, um, have a firm grasp of understanding some ideas around your topic um, and you feel pretty comfortable with the background information. I always recommend starting out in more reference sources like encyclopedias or your textbooks or um, if you want you can look through some other other just more general books or doing some google searches and reading up on as much as you can with just some very basic background information sources first then what you can do is you can start going into the databases and this is a good database to start with but not necessarily the first source that you want to look at so again, this particular resource has a lot of different types of sources in it. It's not just going to have journal articles. So let's go ahead and um, look at this interface. So a lot of the databases look the same. They have search bars. They have um, Boolean operators like this one right now says and that you can do drop down to or, or not. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then you can kind of start limiting your search by date, by full text, by peer reviewed, all these kind of kind of choices here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a topic to get us started. And um, we're kind of just going to start out with what we could is just type in, say, for instance, I was interested in learning more about studies and, and different research that's out there on body image. So I could start with that as a topic, which is very broad, and then I could click search if I wanted to and just see what articles have been written. And it's again, it's going to give me a huge list of sources to pick from. The other thing I could do, though, is I could also add in another search term. So if I have a, a particular type of study or a particular type of article that I want to look for, then I could type that in in the next search box. So let's just try grounded theory here and then I can click search if I want to. Now I told you I'd mention what this and means here. This is called a Boolean operator and you'll find it in other databases as well. And means I want articles on both body image and and grounded theory. If I didn't have this and in here um, and I used or, then I would be saying something like I want body image or grounded theory, which wouldn't put those two search terms together. So I use or when I want to do something like a synonym. So for instance, if I um, had two words that kind of meant the same thing, like children or adolescent or something like that, then I could, two words that are kind of similar or I don't mind using, I might use or in between those. But otherwise, I want to narrow my search results by having articles on both body image and grounded theory. Now, I can limit to full text here if I want to. Um, full, if I limit to full text here, then I am limiting myself from finding the article, the full text the article in other databases 
cases, but sometimes you might want to click full text if you're if you don't have a whole lot of time. Um, and if we don't maybe have it in another database, then and you um, you can request it as through an article request like an interlibrary loan. But if you need the article right now, then you can always choose full text here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that just for the fun of it. And then whenever you're doing research in your classes, a lot of times your instructors are going to ask you to choose peer reviewed, which is a higher, a more quality form of, um, of the literature that you're finding because peer reviewed means that a group of your peers has also, or in if whatever field you're in, has also reviewed your work to make sure that your method looks right, your results, everything, um, your article, things look like they're in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and click search. And then if I do that, then it should give me a nice long search results list that I can look through. So look, I've got over 55,000 articles that I could look through. Um, this is sorted by relevancy. So if I wanted the newest ones first, I could limit. If I wanted the oldest ones first, I could limit by that um, or sort by that. Um, right now, though, relevancy is the one that's selected. Now, um, the other thing that I could do, I'm going to go back one page. So I've got over 55,000 results right now. Now, one other thing that I can do is I can add these quotation marks around my terms, and then I can make sure that those two words stick together when I'm searching, and that's called a phrase search. So if I stick to that and I want body image with those two words together rather than body maybe in the first paragraph and image in the last paragraph. If I want to keep those words in that order together, I can add quotation marks around it. Another way that I can kind of really focus in on my search is if I want to make sure that those words are maybe in the document title or in the, um, if I want to make sure that they're included in the abstract or whatever I want to do, I can choose that from the drop down as well. And then that way, again, I can kind of narrow my focus on the search. So I'm going to go ahead and click full text and peer reviewed again and click search. And now let's look at the list and see what we have. So now look, we're down to a thousand search instead of what we had before because we added those quotation marks in. If I scroll down through this list, another way that I can start limiting is I can enter a date range. Oftentimes in your classes, your instructors are going to want you to use the last 10 years. Some instructors want you to use the last five years. So again, if I want to limit by date, then I can do that as well. So if I want to look at just um, the last couple years or the last 10 years, whatever I want to look at, I'm just choosing something right now just so you can see how it kind of keeps narrowing down. We had over a thousand. Now I limited from um, these years to get me to 789 results. So again, at least it's a little bit more manageable. Now you got to be careful with this list because of just because I um, limited to the last 10 years doesn't mean that I don't want to look at maybe some of the older articles on this topic as well because of sometimes the older articles are helpful for if you're wanting to look for a historical context or see how a term has been defined over the years. If you have an author in the field who's one of those key players or key authors who you definitely want to make sure that you're citing and maybe they that person cited something 30 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever it's been. So for grounded theory, if you had Barney Glazier from 1967 talking about this, you would want to make sure include that in a literature review that you're doing so that you talk about um, whenever you're talking about grounded theory. But again, make sure you look for those seminal authors and those seminal works um, on whatever particular topic that you're using. So be careful limiting just to the last five or 10 years um, because you might miss out on some of those seminal texts, but it's really important to include sources that are the most recent as well. So then again, like I said, I could look through this list and see if there's anything that looks of interest to me. And if I find something, um, then I can just click on it. So you'll notice that some of these search terms or some of the terms that are given are um, the my search terms are actually highlighted um, down through this list. 
And again, like I said, we can just scroll through here. Please know that just because we use the words body image somewhere and grounded theory somewhere in the article, it doesn't mean that you're going to have the perfect article for your topic or the most relevant to you. You have to still go through the list because they might have been talking about grounded theory somewhere in the article, but it doesn't mean that this particular article has that focus. So again, we can just kind of look through the list, see if anything looks of interest to us. I'm just going to click on this one. I don't even didn't even check to see what it was about. Again, make sure that what you're checking is something that is relevant to your topic. And again, then we've got the article, the authors, the um, the title of the journal, the volume, the issue, the year, the DOI, all that citing information is given up here at the top to help you know how to cite it. And then there are some other options over here on the right hand side. You can download the PDF. So if you wanted to save this maybe to a folder um, on your computer or wherever you want to save it so you could have it for later if you were interested in this one. I do recommend that you if you find an article that you think would be helpful for your topic that make sure that when you're saving it try to give it a name um, that includes either the author or, or the kind of the main subject matter or um, even the year something that's going to remind you later what it is because otherwise if you just click download PDF and it maybe it says article 30 or something on it then it's going to be harder for you to start sorting through your articles later on so that's kind of just a little tip for you to use if you're wanting to cite the source there's a cite button here be careful with this because not everything like this one right here is APA 6 if you're not using APA 6 then again be careful with what you're using there are options for APA 7th um, whatever you're doing I always recommend checking because sometimes the capitalization isn't always correct and other times I find that students get the citation copy and paste it into the references page but they don't keep the formatting so they lose the italics or whatever it is or they lose the hanging indent so again make sure that you're keeping all of that there there is an email option up here at the top as well you can email this to yourself you can print it there's all different kinds of options here available to you and then you can download the PDF there. For this particular one, it says full text PDF. I can click on this tab so that I can view the article. There it is. Again, I could download and print this way as well. And then I can just scroll through the article and read it right there on the screen. I always recommend reviewing the abstract first to see if it looks like it's going to be relevant to your topic. If it doesn't look like it's going to be relevant, that doesn't mean that completely get rid of it because it might be helpful for, um, if you still find it to be interesting, you might want to use it for a, another paper or another topic or a dissertation or something like that. So save it in some other kind of folder, but don't get too um, wrapped up in spending a lot of time on something that doesn't go along with your immediate topic. Okay, so that's how you go about finding articles in this particular database. So I'm going to take you through a couple more searches. I'm going to click on basic search that looks like this. And then if I want the advanced search, which is the one that we started with, it looks like this. So we've got basic and it gives you more of like one search bar or we have advanced that has that gives you several search bars and the advanced one is the one that will probably come up I would assume if you're doing this on your own later so again we could try body image this time and this time we could try case study you'll notice that all of my limiters are kind of kept through this like the full text and peer reviewed that I had checked before um, again I'm still adding those quotation marks to use as a phrase search but again remember just because we use the words case study doesn't mean every single article here is a case study you still have to review it because case study may have just been something mentioned in a lit review about another article that it's talking about um, or somewhere mentioned about a case study but it doesn't mean that this is definitely a case study so make Make sure you check if you're looking for something that you definitely want to be a case study. So for instance, this one actually says a case study. So, um, so you'll know, but again, check with your, um, check the title, check the abstract so you know what you're looking at. Sometimes 
like I said too, you'll want to come over here on the left hand side and change the date. That limiter did not keep, so I would want to keep checking on that. Okay. Um, one other one, again, just to kind of keep showing you, again, we can come up here to the search bar if I wanted body image and narrative inquiry this, this time. Again, I mean, you can keep typing in the different types of, of studies or methods that you want um, and get different kinds of articles to keep coming up. Okay, so one thing is, is I like to really play with my search terms and figure out what keywords should I use, what should I type in that box to find what I'm actually looking for. Um, sometimes you'll find a, a search term works really well, and other times you'll find, man, I really need to, to really think through this, and um, I might need to change those search terms. So this time, instead of, of um, body image, I had a, a student who was wanting to look at eating disorders or you know whatever you're wanting to look at again kind of just keep keep playing with your terms again now we're really narrowed down look we're down to 71 results so if you kind of keep changing and keep narrowing down and keep adding your search terms and changing them as you're looking through the articles you'll gather a list and you'll start to see um, what terms are used in the field because a word that you may use you know on an everyday basis may not be the exact one that the authors in that field are using maybe we need to um, to, to change that so again, this is a little bit about how to use this particular ProQuest database. Again, I recommend that you use the scholarly, the peer-reviewed sources as much as you can, um, but sometimes some of the other sources might be helpful, especially a dissertation. Um, if you narrow, then you can always look at, at those as well. And other than that, just have fun with the research and know that your instructors, your librarians, all of us are here to help you out with whatever questions you have.